Greetings, fellow descendants. My name is Lars. Today, I want to talk to you about the preseason weekly challenges, as well as the supply coins that you're going to be getting from, from those. As of Hotfix 1.0.7, they have stated that week seven and week eight are going to increase the amount of supply coins that they're going to give you. And oh boy, did they deliver. So let's go ahead and check the battle pass. So let's look at week six real quick. Week six offered us six of the eight missions, sporting five supply coins for each of those missions. So all in all, we were able to get 30 from the week six mission. The week seven missions, however, are all giving away supply coins, every single one of them. And they're giving away more than before. We have three of them that are giving five, three of them that are giving eight, and two of them that are giving 10. All in all, this is 59 supply coins as opposed to the 30 from the previous week. And if week eight is going to be as much, if not more, then we're definitely on track to being able to clear all of the supply coins from the battle supply shop. We can get every single thing here if you do most, if not all of your missions. But this also opens us up to not necessarily needing to do every single one of these um, seasonal challenges here. I know, for instance, the Reach Mastery Rank 20 and the Defeat 200,000 Enemies is a little rough because you need to put in a lot of time to get those. Um, I'm pretty sure you can get all of these done, get all of the supply coin uh, purchases without completing both of these. Just pick whichever one you can feasibly do and get that done along with all the other missions. And you should be able to get all of the, all of the uh, Battle Supply Shop purchases that you want. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about week seven and go over how to quickly get all of these missions done so you can get your hands on those juicy supply coins. So let's begin with catch me if you can. Okay. So when it comes to the catch me if you can mission, you're going to need to do the Vespers special operation neutralize void experiment uh, mission. When you get in here, you're going to need to interact with the Dimension Zealot, which is the little dude that's, it's, that spawns in the bubble that will run away from you. You have to shoot him with your firearm. This requires firearm damage. This mission, I think, is going to be one of the hardest to do. This challenge will be, I mean, because of the fact that it is entirely dependent upon people, your teammates, letting you even shoot the enemy. Lots of players are playing Bunny. Bunnies have it ingrained in their very soul to uh, pulse lightning and just go fast. And so they just instinctively just kind of do that. And they blast this dude immediately as he spawns, not even giving you a chance to get inside the bubble to shoot him. So I say to everyone playing this mission for the next like week or two, just please pump the brakes, you know, let people shoot the Dimension Zealot, let them get credit for their challenge here. Just save your gas for all of the enemies that are about to spawn once this thing gets gets shot. And then after this is over, you can go back to just being full on, you know, balls to the wall. Just go, gotta go fast. But for now, just kind of pump the brakes and let people get their challenge done. Let's uh, try and be cool to each other in this community and uh, focus on giving each, giving everyone the chance to get their stuff done. Um, as it stands, when you shoot the enemy uh, early on, it has about 7,000 or less health. That's how much I was doing when I shot it before it would run away. About midway through, you get about 17,000. And then in the later stages, you get like 20 to 40,000 somewhere in there. I shot like, I shot it a couple times, so like 20,000. Uh, so the further you go in, the easier it is to get this challenge done. And through a whole mission, every single person in the group should be able to get it done if you all get a chance to shoot it. So just uh, give everyone an opportunity to get their thing done. If people, when you're done, let the people, let the other people know that you don't need it anymore and that they can take their turns. Or um, if you, if no one needs it, then you can just kind of start going gung ho and taking everything down. So just work together, make sure that it's a pleasant experience for everybody and that everyone can get their challenge done. So it's uh, not gonna be a huge headache for people just to try and get their supply coins. But yeah. Uh, additionally, you can also do the almost there challenge as well for this week. 
by clearing up to the final wave of a special operation, which the Vesper special operation is a special operation. So if you clear the entire operation and get your firearm shots in, you can get two of these done off one mission. It is a long mission though, so if you don't want to do that, just you can get almost there done by just going and doing Sterile Lands Block Hyper. It's like maybe a 15 minute mission. It's a lot faster, only 10 waves, way easier to do. So when it comes to getting an Ultimate Descendant, you have a variety of options. If you've already gotten an Ultimate Descendant, then this challenge will be done retroactively and you don't have to worry about it. But for everyone else who still needs to get one, farming one up is going to be challenging no matter what. You have Ultimate Lepic, Viesa, Glay, Ajax, Bunny, or Valby to choose from. By far, I think one of the easiest ones to get your hands on, though, is Ultimate Valby. Ultimate Valby has a number of different ways to get various pieces. Uh, so let's go ahead and quickly take a look. For the Outpost ones, we've got the Amorphous Material Pattern 55 Mutant A, which has the Ultimate Valby Stabilizer for 32% chance. This comes from the Kingston Hard Fallen Theater Volga Strategic Outpost. It's the only outpost in Kingston, and clearing that, you'll need Sharon to acquire this. But then opening it up at the Void Fusion Reactor in Kingston is very easy, especially considering they, in Hotfix 1.0.7, have nerfed all of the HP for all of these Void Fusion Reactor bosses. They basically fall down as fast as Devourer does. They are so easy to take down. So this is your probably best bet to get Ultimate Valby Stabilizer. Um, up next we have the Amorphous Material Pattern 73 Mutant AA for your Ultimate Valby Spiral Catalyst at a 20% chance. This comes from the Vesper's Hard Lost Supply Depot Outpost. Again, you will require Sharon to do this, but 20% chance and the previous one being 32% chance, these are already really high chances to get these pieces without even needing to enter into any Void Intercept fights. So that's already a really good spot to be in. Uh, up next, we have Amorphous Material Pattern 87 Mutant AA, which has the ultimate Valby code at a 10% chance. This one is acquired from the Echo Swamp Hard Dungeon, the Chapel. Uh, this mission is pretty easy to do. It is longer, but you can get two Amorphous Materials per run by going in with a group or by yourself and boosting up the kill score so that you can earn enough points to acquire a guaranteed two per run. Um, this would be your best bet in order to do this. And in order to crack this open, you will need to fight the Hard Pyromaniac. So if you can't do Hard Pyromaniac, uh, your other options for this piece are the Amorphous Material Pattern 110 Mutant AA, uh, which you can get from the Hagios Hard Corrupted Zone Outpost. And then you can just pop this open on the Hagios Hard um, Abyssal Fusion Reactor in the Corrupted Zone. The ways to get the final piece, the Enhanced Cells, are either from the 115 Mutant AA, which has a 32% chance for the Enhanced Cells, but in order to do this, you will have to beat Hard Frostwalker, which recently, as of 1.0.7, has gotten a significant adjustment to it, so it's a lot easier to complete. During the Frenzy mode, when you break open its uh, weak points, you will get two flames from them, so you don't need to worry so much about getting the flames to do the mechanic anymore. It'll actually be a lot easier to get and, and complete, so Frostwalker is a lot easier of a fight to manage. You will need to complete Hagios Hard the Haven dungeon for this, which is annoying, but still doable. And then you just gotta go fight Frostwalker for your chance at the 32% ultimate Valby enhanced cells. If you don't want to do that, you do only have a few other options down here with the normals. You can do the Amorphous Material Pattern 11 Mutant AA for a 3% chance at the Enhanced Cells, which can be acquired via Sterile Land Block Kuiper Mining, which is a Special Operations mission. Or you can do uh, Pattern 44 Mutant AA, which gives you a 6% chance at the Ultimate Valby Cells, and this is acquired from the Hagios Normal Old Mystery Dungeon. It's really up to you how you want to go about this. If you want to go after Ultimate Valby, I still think it's one of the easiest. And with Frostwalker's sort of nerf recently, it makes it a lot more manageable to do, especially in pub groups. You can get these done a lot easier. Um, and most of them come from Outposts, so you don't need to worry too much about that. That would probably be my recommendation for the Ultimate to go after. But obviously, if you want a different Ultimate, pick whichever one you want to farm for and farm for that one. And you'll be able to get your hands on it and get the quest done at the same time. Just be forewarned, it does take time to craft the Ultimates. 
It takes um, about 18 hours to craft the 16 to 18 hours to craft the uh, the base pieces, and then it requires like another 30 plus hours to craft the descendant itself. So make sure you have enough time. Uh, you'll have about 11 or 12 days from now until you really need to kind of get that done if you want to get credit for this quest before the uh, the preseason ultimately ends. So be be mindful about that. Okay, so next up I want to talk about two that you can do at the same time. Blitz 2 and a handgun. Both of these challenges require you to complete a mission. Um, Blitz 2 requires that you complete a mission within four minutes, and a handgun requires that you complete three missions on hard with a handgun equipped. So my suggestion for this is to go to the Anticipate Ambush Point in Sterile Lands uh, Rockfall map. If you just teleport to the main outpost in Sterile Lands Rockfall map, it's right outside as you walk out of the area, and it's right there in your face. This is a very fast mission. You can get this done incredibly quickly, whether you're alone or with a group of people. And getting it done three times will take you no time at all. And you will definitely get it done with in under four minutes, unless you start it, sit on your hands for three and a half minutes, and then start trying to do the mission. You should be able to get it done very, very easily. You do not need to have your handgun equipped the entire time. You can use any other weapon and then pull out your handgun at the very end. So make sure you pull out your handgun right before the mission ends, when the elite is about to be killed. That way you can get credit for this one and get it done really quick. Okay, so when it comes to shape stabilizers, you have plenty of options to go and farm. You can do outposts, you can do special operations and try and get them that way. That, those will result in like 1.5, 1.3% chances. The best way to try and get your hands on shape stabilizers, though, is to come and do the infiltration operation missions, aka the dungeons. These will net you a 20% chance at finding a shape stabilizer drop for getting the maximum amount of points when you up your kill score. And thankfully, they've just done away with the grapple and jump removal for these, and they've bumped a couple of them up so that you can get them done without having to go all the way to the max, or even at max, you were unable to do them, but ultimately this is the way to get shape, shape stabilizers a lot faster, is to do these. So there are a bunch of dungeons to do. I would say don't necessarily focus on doing the fastest ones, but instead focus on farming for pieces that you are looking for stuff for. You're going to get the most out of it that way. Sure, you could just look for the fastest one, but I'm sure everybody has something or another they want to farm for still. So aiming for that is probably your best bet. And if you're looking for easier ones to do, you know, the, the higher up you go for these, the harder they generally get. Um, but the Kingston ones are pretty easy. The Sterilan ones are uh, just farm for those. Get your kill score up to like 220, 230 if you can. And just try and get your best chance of getting shape stabilizers. Then just go crack them open. Go crack them open on the... So, uh, the Reaper of Erupting Flames mission requires that you take on the Pyromaniac Colossus. You can do this on normal, or you can do this on hard. If you do this on hard, it will help towards the Intercept Battle Conqueror mission. But if you are not feeling up to doing it on hard, uh, then you can go ahead and just do the normal version. And if you just want it done really quick and easy, you can do the normal version as well. Just uh, go ahead and hop into the normal version, take shots at a shoulder till it so you bring it down to the yellow, and then you go and hop up on the shoulder and break the piece, and you'll get your mission done quick and easy. Then just clean them out and get whatever your rewards and get out of there. Um, I don't know if this works if you shoot the shoulder off, but thankfully he has two. So if you do do it on normal and you are boasting a little too much damage, like I did kind of here in this clip, just uh, <laughs> he's got two shoulders, so give another shot. Um, but if it does work, by shooting it off, then that's great. I would just assume that it requires that you remove the part via the grappling destruction, so. And last, but certainly not least, we have the Intercept Battle Conqueror mission, which requires that you complete five Void Intercept fights on hard difficulty. And the easiest recommendation for this is to fight Devourer on hard mode. This dude is made of paper. Like, you can sneeze on him and he'll just go flying. Um... I run primarily with gun-based builds, uh, I do not have a bunch of descendants yet fully capped out for skill-based builds, so I can just 
take him down pretty quickly and easily with a gun. But in order to avoid doing his immunity phase, I do have to carefully set him down to a certain... I have to get both the shoulders to yellow and then get him within a certain frenzy meter range. And sometimes I push him a little too far and he just goes down. He goes into his immunity phase anyway. But afterward, it's easy to clean through his orbs and then get, uh, get him down after the immunity phase. Uh, if you are struggling with the hard mode fights and you are looking for an easier way or a more fe feasible way to get them done, um, especially if you've just gotten hard mode, I will have a video out on this uh, early next week that should maybe give you some sort of option to get yourself through some of these hard mode fights. But if you're looking to get these done sooner rather than later, uh, try asking in world chat. Go in there, ask and see if anyone will... Uh, be able to help you do the fights. A lot of people are willing to help with the first four fights. They're pretty easy, and ever and there's a lot of people that are willing to help. So um, just go ahead and ask. See if anybody wants to assist you with that and get you your clears for this mission. Um, and if you're still looking to try and get them done by yourself, be on the lookout for a video later, uh, early next week. I'll have something for you guys. Um, but yeah, just. Take out this guy five times, get yourself some coins, and that's it for this week's weekly challenges. Oh boy, those challenges were pretty fun. Getting all those coins, getting them done, getting all those coins is going to be a pretty, pretty wild ride, and I'm so glad we were getting more coins for this week and the next week to round out this final bit of the preseason. I am super hyped for season one coming out very soon, two weeks out. Uh, we've got new Descendant, new Ultimate Descendant, new Regular Descendant probably going to be featured as well. Who knows what kind of changes we're going to get, because they said they probably want to change things season to season. Um, but it's really cool that we're getting enough coins to be able to finish out our stuff here for the preseason before we get into Season 1. But yeah, uh, it, since we're probably going to have this type of thing going through all the seasons, um, I am thinking of doing this as a regular um, thing on the channel where I will go ahead and go over the week's missions as they come out and kind of go over fast ways to get them done or maybe slightly slightly more efficient ways to get them done. I can't be perfect at it, you know, like I'll, I'll give you the best information that I can, I have on the subject that I can figure out and uh, hopefully it helps. And if you like that and you want me to do continue to do this, let me know, you know, leave a like, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, as always, if you have any questions regarding anything in the video or just about the game in general, please let me know in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And if you enjoyed watching this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more TFD content. Preseason coming to an end, season one hype. Let's get ready. Thank you all for watching. Have a nice day and I will see you in the next video. Peace.